Good afternoon and welcome everybody. Today is the next installment of the Managed 360 Masterclass where it is our hope to help you get the most out of your landscape business operating system. Today is webinar number 15 in our series and we're gonna be setting up and using services. Now, uh, services are packages that may consist of kits, items, equipment, labor that are provided to clients in an as-needed, optional, uh, or required fashion. The service might be completed once or have the ability to take place um, with a given frequency, so on a, a recurring basis. Uh, today, we're uh, lucky enough to have Fabio Ronconi with us, one of our great uh, implementation and training specialists. Hey, Fabio. How's it going, Joe? Good. How are you? Good, good. You know, some of the important things to think about when setting up um, your services, um, first of all, know what uh, your market will bear um, in certain markets. You know, pricing is uh, kind of, you know, there's no collusion, but, uh, you know, people know what uh, things cost and um, what other, you know, your peers are charging. So make sure you know what the market will bear. Make sure you're profitable when setting up your services. You know, understanding what the market will bear um, will play into that, but uh, make sure you're profitable. Include the seasonality into the equation. You know, if you're in an area that goes through uh, a high heat uh, period at the uh, top of the summer, then you may have to adjust the level of service, especially for mowing. So make sure you take that into the equation when you're setting up your services. Decide what service offering you're going to put together. Um, you know, are you gonna be a full service maintenance company? You're just gonna do uh, mowing trims? Are you gonna include gardening, uh, pruning, and those kinds of services as well? So get, definitely give that some thought. Create service packages that are unique to your company. So where are your core strengths? Uh, where are your people strongest? And um, put your services uh, and your offering uh, as close to that as possible and uh, you'll see a maximization of your profit margin. And then ultimately use Manage360 to build that service offering and balance your pricing between market rates and profitability and uh, you know, adjusting the uh, the rates inside of Manage360, you'll be able to uh, see that with the analysis. So after uh, no further ado, uh, I think it's perfect time to dive in and uh, hand things over to Fabio. Uh, Fabio, can uh, you take us into services, show us what it's all about? No problem, thanks Joe. Let me get my screen going here. <clears throat> all right, um, thanks Joe again. So we're now, going to talk about, like I said, like Joe said, I'll kind of re reiterate a few things that he said, talking about services, um, but both from like a, the creation component, like setting them up and then a little bit going, that's the main part, that's going to be the meat of the, of the thing today, we'll talk about that, but we'll also be going into um, how they get used on the, uh, once the services are made, then how, how do I use these services um, on a maintenance estimate? There. So kind of broke up into a couple parts. So first, like I said, we're going over the services. We're gonna make a couple quick ones just to kind of show you the process and the fields that are involved there as well. Now, um, this builds a little bit off of the last master class when we had the kits, when Jordan got into the kits, because um, the kits and services can work together. Now, a service, like again, like Joe mentioned, services contain can contain kits they don't have to have a kit as you can have a service with just labor or just specific items as well but in some instances um, a kit may be very useful in service so if you've gone to the trouble of setting up the kit getting it ready then you can you can use it in the service so again like i said i'd highly recommend going over that master class as well if you haven't seen it because then that goes into the ideas of the kit building because like they can work together very well now what are services so like Joe had mentioned a few of the things, they're specific to the maintenance module. So the services are only for maintenance, while kits, and on the other hand, they can be used for both construction and maintenance. Services are maintenance specific. So you have to have maintenance division, you have to have maintenance modules to see them. Now, generally there's a collection of, of cost book items in my service, like kits, equipment, material, labor, all that is in there. Something we're going to provide to the client, a service is, again, analogous to 
we're going to go and do this service as a visit, we're gonna have a visit, we're gonna do this work once, once we go there. Now, they can be done as, as part of a seasonal contract. Uh, this is, you, 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 you're going to pay for X number of visits or it's gonna be a one-time, you know, we're gonna come and do this one time and that's it um, on there. Now, the services are set up in the cost book in Manage because they are, again, we don't create them every single time because they are typically kind of standard, more standardized work we're going to provide to them. Mowing, spring cleanup, fall cleanup, leaf raking, um, you know, hedge trimming, garden services, you know, all that kind of stuff. Those are, we provide these services and we, by putting them in the cost book, you know, it was typically now, again, typically they are this, we can labor and these materials to do these services, but obviously, on a per customer basis, we can make changes to them. But again, we put them in the cost because we're gonna use them to, they're fairly consistent across the board. And so if you do get in the cost book, further services are the first thing at the top of the list. It's on there. So we're gonna jump into a service, um, but before we do, we're gonna talk about, what, before you can, so before you get, again, if, you, again, if you're new to this maintenance or on there, before you can make a service, there's a few things you need to have done beforehand. Like I said, you need to have a maintenance division, which in that case, you know, that was a maintenance division, then you have to have a service category. So um, in the settings area, there is a, under the cost book settings, there is service categories. So this, again, prior to making any services, you need to have at least one category that's in here. Um, and this is, again, you typically I said, once you, you get the maintenance module new, we go through this with you during the implementation. But just so you know, you can always add more categories later if you, if you do want to um, break up the services. So you can have different categories again, or you can have fewer. Like you don't, there's no required number of categories you need. But if you want to kind of break things up generally into, you know, residential, uh, commercial type breakdown, or you know, grounds maintenance versus snow versus fertilization. This, the categories are division specific. So again, you guys probably just like with kids, if I have a, a service in a specific division, then when I put on estimate, that estimate belongs to that division as well. As well. So as long as I have one service category in here, you know, then I can create services. Now the service category is useful in a couple ways. Number one, when you are creating a, an estimate and you want to add services, you can filter the list, just show me things just show my grounds, my grounds maintenance stuff on there as well. But then also that the categories are also useful on the, the job tracking side or the management side when I'm trying to schedule scheduling and routing or looking for things or reporting, I can use the categories to search for specific things to add to a route or to schedule or when I'm running reporting, I can group things by service category as well um, on there. So again, categories, they're a precursor to the categories themselves don't contain any information except their containers for the services themselves on there. And again, they're in the settings area. Once we have that, so again, categories, I'm gonna pop back into the cost book. So the services themselves, they're in the cost book. I'm just gonna go over an existing service first just to kind of give you an overview of what it's like. And then we're gonna go in and create one from scratch. Here. So basically in the cost book, go into services here now. Like I said, um, the service itself, once and you're in the cost book, you can see you, know, you can have multiple services listed in here. They have the category, they have their own divisions, you may have multiple divisions, cost and price, very similar to what you're kind of used to seeing. The service have a name, service have a description um, in here. Now, I'm gonna open up this garden maintenance service, for example. Click on the service name. So a typical service, again, it has a name and it has a display name. There's one, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about a lot of these more fields in more detail when we get into um, the creation. I just kind of want to go over a few of the main ones in here as well while we're here. Um, so in here, you, the big thing is that on the items tab, the services can have a price set in the cost book on there as well. Unlike kits, kits are, like I said, a combination of, of ratios to do the work, the service itself can have a specific price. You can set a price in the cost book. Now, you can set a price in here. Uh, once I go into an estimate, that can be that that price goes across to that estimate. You can adjust that obviously on a per estimate basis depending on, on what we're doing for that particular customer as well. When you are building this 
service, the price that is, is calculated initially is again, just like an estimate, it's like based on what is in the service. So I may have labor, materials, I may have some travel time, whatever it has, all these things, manage does the math and calculates, okay, that's how much this service is going to cost. So I need to have items in my service in order to have a price. I can have one item, I can have 10 items, doesn't really matter. All those things are used to calculate the overall price of the service on there as well. Now, again, like I said, a lot of this, you can adjust this once it's on the estimate. I'll come back in and cover more of these details. I wanna cover a few of the just basic ones while we're here. Um, now, the service, it can be in contract, which means this is part of the contract. Um, you, you're gonna pay so much over the season, and we're going to come 10, 15, 20 times on there as well. Uh, it can also be a, an on-demand or an as-needed service, basically, which again, those services are the part of your contract, but anything that's as needed on demand, those are not paid for as part of the overall price. Those are paid for only when they're done on there as well. So the in contract things, yes, we are going to do these things. So part of your overall price. And that's anything that's in as needed on demand, those things will be, you know, billed once we do them on there as well for that. So the biggest difference between as needed or on demand is it's basically semantic in that as needed means there's an external event, if I hover over this, of an external requirement. If like, for example, it's a salting or a snow service, we will do it based on the, the requirement of the weather. On demand is a, at the request of the customer. So, oh, the customer, yeah, can you please come and do the aeration? Okay, great, we're gonna do it, do it on there as well. So, and then we'll charge them for on there as well. So that's what the included options are here. Now, there is also frequency options, again, for services. A service may be done one time only, which is fine, or a service can have a specific frequency, daily, weekly, monthly, per contract, um, on there as well, and then how many times we are going to come within that service as well. So, and then they, they can, we, can have, we can have a theoretical maximum number of time on here as well um, for that. So each of these, Things, I guess that you set them up in the cost book. The idea is that we're setting them up in the cost book so that when I use this garden maintenance service on an estimate, everything comes across as I've already said it. But all of this in here, we can easily adjust all of this on the estimate or any, sorry, even any part of it as well. We don't have to adjust all, we can try and set up. These are the typical things that we need when we're looking at a service as well. Now, like I said, that service that we already have, I want to go back out into the main cost book and just create now, go through the, the creation process of the service. Like I said, it's, and once you've done it a couple of times, it's, it's fairly straightforward as well. It's gonna go back out to services. So in the cost book, I go to actually create a service now. In the service, click on services. And again, we have a new service button. Now, just as a, as a note, I'll probably talk about later as well. We have a cloning service action as well, just like with cloning kits. Uh, you, do, you do the same thing with service. If you have a service and you want to make one very similar but with slightly different options, you can do the clone service function as well. But in this case, we're going to make a new one on here, so I'll click new service. Now, we make a new service, again, before, so when I looked at the ex existing one, it had three tabs. When I have a new service, I have the initial page, I have only one page for information. Once I save this, then I will have the full three tabs, and then I'll be able to add things. Right now, I, can't, I cannot add anything to my service yet until I complete this at least and save it one time. Now, what I do need is a name. So if I try to save it now, it's going to complain because I don't have a name. Um, I choose a division, and then based on my division choice, I can then choose the service category itself. Again, if I had multiple divisions, I could choose that. I could choose categories, like I said, are division specific. So I'm gonna have a service here. And call it name. Now you'll see there's a, there's a display name here. So the name is required. The display name is also required. However, when you're typing the name in, if you tap to the next field, click away, it'll pre-fill the display name with the exact same name on there. And again, that's the default setting. Um, if you want to have a different value there, now the display name, as you can, if you ever see an underline in here, if you hover over it, it 
kind of gives you a little more detail here. The display name is what you would use on the proposal, on the invoicing on there as well. If you want to have a different name for the customer or for whatever reason on the est estimate, you can change the display name. Now you can have a different display name here in, in the cost book itself, or once you put some to an estimate for, for that particular customer, you want to tweak that name, you can change the display name, no problem. And then that way, again, it's still, still tied back to the same service uh, as well um, on there. Now, that's required, like I said, in there. Now, there's an optional button at the top here. Again, this is, this is saying that this isn't, well, when we add it to an estimate, this service is typically something that they will choose as, a, as an option. It's not something that we typically offer as part of our standard package. Um, again, if you want to say that this is a typical option service, you can click on that and then this will be remembered as an optional service. If you don't click it, again, this means that it's typically something that's in part of our packaging as well. Now, for any services that are optional, when they're win that estimate into a job, that those optional services and Android prompts say, do you want to include these optional services as part of the job on there as well? Otherwise, they, they won't come across because they haven't chosen them on there as well. So the optional setting, and like I said, once you save this, but all of these things, you can, you can change literally almost anything once it gets onto the estimate. Outside of your division, you can't change the service category, but pretty much everything else, you can change it all once it gets onto the estimate. Now, division, service category, you have to pick those. We'll just say this is grounds, maintenance, not snow. Um, charge type here. Now, there's two choices, per visit, Time and material, t &M. So per visit, again, we are going to this service, we're going to specify a price for the customer. Different customers may have different prices for the same service. Whenever we do that service, we're going to charge that much every time. It's, it's a set price for this service every time we go. Time material, obviously, if that means that we are going to charge you a, based on our actual time and the materials that we use as well. So we don't necessarily wait now, we might not know the price up front, but you know, this is a TM service and you're gonna just have an hourly rate based on the labor as well. So I'll set this one up as a, as a per visit service. Now, Rick, um, the include, like I said before, um, how are we going to, is it as needed? Is it on demand? Is it part of the contract? I will leave it as part of the contract. Um, in here and then recurring. Now I won't click on recurring yet because I just want I want to save this one first. Like I said, all I really need is a name and a display name and division on there. Once I save it, so you see here I have a description, crew instructions, customer description. These are all here. Once I save my service and then any subsequent time after the first save, I will now have my three tabs of it saved. So now I have my no longer says new service bed cleanup with mulching here. My name, display, name out here, I can adjust those as well. My optional checkbox, I want to use it, no problem. I have the active checkbox, checkbox, excuse me, here now as well. So the active checkbox here, again, down the line, if I no longer wish to use this service, we have a different one, different, I can uncheck it and I won't be able, and again, I won't select it for any future estimates um, on there. Another thing we have here is a private notes here. So similar to, um, again, with the kits, kits have a private notes field. If there's something, this and the private notes are really for the person creating the estimate. So if there are things that the about this service that the estimator should be aware of, you can put them into the private notes. They're, they're only really visible during the estimate creation process. Um, and you can see them once they're on there as well, but there's no reporting on the private notes. It's more just like when you are building it out, here's this information that you should be aware of on there. Now, let's just touch back on the recurring again. So there is, a, an, again, like Joe mentioned, there's an option to have a service that is one time or the service can be multiple times. It can be once, twice, five times, 15 times on there as well. If the service is happening more than once, I simply check the recurring checkbox and then I will have additional options to fill in. Again, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a one time service, I. I can leave it like this, it'll work, but otherwise I can just uncheck that I and mean, just a single service happens once, we're done, no problem. However, I click recurring, you can see when I do that, I have a choice to, just, to define what is the frequency of the service itself. So the frequencies, some of the couple of them are pretty standard, daily, 
you know, and if you choose daily, weekly, or monthly, it, you'll see that there's an every blank days, weeks, or months on there as well. So if it's weekly, every one week, every two weeks, every three weeks, whatever you want to put on here, we can decide to find how that is on there. Same thing with daily or monthly. You can set that up on there as well. Along with that, we have a, what is the typical number of visits we are going to do? Now, again, if you know that we do this three times, four times, you know, typically you can put that in four, four visits. And now the maximum. What is the maximum? No, we, we, we barely, we never go more than four. Four is a maximum. We'll say sometimes, depending on the situation, we may go up to five or six visits. You can put a maximum number on there as well. Now, if you hover over the maximum visits, you'll notice it says, well, we're not going to charge for those additional, we're going to charge for four, but there, there will be two additional available. Now, you, you can, we'll look at that in the items in a second, but for those additional visits, you may charge more or you can charge exactly the same as the other ones as well. So maximum visits have that ability to potentially charge additional for any visits over the standard number. Again, you don't have to, you can still get the same price, but it gives you that option as well. So for the frequency, like I said, weekly, monthly, daily, pretty straightforward. But basically what happens to this is then, put this on the estimate, it's going to say these four visits, yep, how much point, how much per visit. When I have a job, then I will be able, then it'll create four visits for me. And then I, the system knows that these are weekly type visits. So again, tying back into our routing masterclass and stuff, when I'm going to create a route for this, it, I can route this on a, on a weekly route because this is a weekly service on there as well. The other recurrence pattern that we have is called per contract. This is this pattern, uh, so the one that's a non-pattern, for example. So per contract means we're going to go four times. There's not, a, it's not once a week. It could be once in the spring, then six weeks later, then we're going to go in a week, and then again at the end of the, end of the season. So this just means we're going to go four times, and we'll schedule them as we need to. There's no specific pattern we can link to per contract. So if you see if a service is per contract, when you tie back to the routing, that is that the routes that this one can be put on are manually scheduled routes because again there's no pattern that we can link no weekly daily monthly pattern on there as well for recurrence now again for some cases you can say this is per contract this frequency is one of those things that can be adjusted on the estimate level if you would like to um, as well on there now there's a notes tab and an items tab so details tab like i said basic information what is it called how are we billing is in the contract and is, is it recurring on the notes field. Here we have what is the description and again this is an internal description of the service. We, we can use that if we'd like to. It's not required on there as well. We do have a crew instructions here as well. So if there are some instructions, now this is this, this goes all the way down into this investment as well, but if there's some instructions here that kind of apply to this service as a whole, for every customer that gets this service, we have some standard instructions for our crews to follow then we can put them into here, to this field here. That way, every estimate that we use this on will have these instructions, and therefore every job will also have those instructions as well. And then those instructions are available on the timesheets. And that, that goes to the mobile app. For if you're using the mobile app to track this, those instructions are available directly on the mobile app as well. So if I have instructions, like I said, that are general enough, they apply at the service level for everyone, I can put them into here. Additionally, once I put this on an estimate, if I if I want to modify them a bit or you know make a den make an addendum or fully adjust it on there, I can then put specific instructions for that client on the, the crew instructions as well, so they can they can be more detailed. And then if I want to get into even more specifics, once I win that and it becomes a job, if I have four visits, I can edit the instructions for visit number three on there as well for that. So instruction, the, the instructions can start here at the service in the cost book if they're general enough, and then but they can be adjusted all the way through the whole process. Now we have crew instructions, excuse me. Crew instruction, yes, customer description. Now the customer description, um, again, this is very useful on the estimating side because we can give this description, we can have manage show the description on the Word document. This is the service that we're providing. Here's the description. 
we can put on here. Very useful for, again, when you're presenting the proposal to the client. So, and again, it's a quick, and it can be form, it can be formatted on here as well. I'm just gonna cut and paste some text in there to make it easier. I'll just do that. So I can cut and paste things on there as well. Like I said, you, know, you can do that. And then you can adjust them. You can edit it in here also, depending on how you want to do it. You know, it's all, you cut and paste from Word. You may have to do more formatting than if you don't because Word's notorious for sometimes, you know, putting in extra text and fields that, you know, we don't need on there as well. But you can do that, done. So now I have that available. Again, I don't have to use it every time. I have that option if I want to use it, I can do that as well um, on there. So notes, very, very useful. Like I said, instructions for the, for the people in the field, the customer description for the, for the client. Now, the meat of the service. What is on this service? How are we how are we pricing this particular service? The items tab of the service. Now, again, if you've used manage already, and again, whether you, if you build kits, you're in the cost book, we are now going to just simply add items into our service on here as well. Like I said, it can have a kits. It can have more than one kit. It can have 10 kits. It can have two kits. Um, you can have just individual items, labor, material, equipment, labor and equipment, or just labor. You can, just any combination of items from the cost book, we can add this into the service on there as well. Now, there's a green add items button. Again, you just click on that button. So what it's gonna do again, normal process, open up a window into our cost book. Again, because I'm in this division and kits and labor are division specific, I'll only see maintenance division kits and maintenance division labor. Everything else, I'll have it across my cost book as well um, on there. So I'm just gonna add one kit. Like I said, I can add a kit in here. I have an existing kit that I've already made because in this case, the kit's useful because in the, in the kit, I can specify what is the area of this bed we are gonna be mulching or, or cleaning up on there as well. Then, I, then the, that'll calculate my rates and everything else on there as well. So I can take this kit, click on it, add it in. Now again, if I have lead items, I can set them here. Fully adjustable afterwards as well. What is a typical quantity of this kit? I can leave it at one if I want, or to know I'm going to change it anyway. I can say typically we're around 100, around 100 square feet, 200 square feet. I can put that in, sure, and then adjust as well. Again, we are typically going to have to adjust anyway because we don't know from customer to customer what it's going to be. But I'm setting up in the cost, but kind of for our most general setting. Add the items again. I can add other items as well. Just adding that one thing in, and again, you can see now I have a kit in my cost. Book. My service now has a price. Again, the price right now is just the summary of all the other items on here. Again, based on my 200 square feet. Again, because this is a kit, if I change that, it's going to recalculate everything in here again based on my kit ratios that I've already set up on there as well for that. So again, I just have a kit, so now I have a kit in here, and again, I can edit the kit. Again, we'll go put on estimates, you can see that as well, but the kit can be edited, um, the lead item can be changed, items can be added into the kit after you want as well, there's lines can be added on there. But basically, again, normal details in here, and then down here as a subtotal, what is the price per visit based on this kit quantity? Is there going to be a discount? Now, the discount here, the discount typically wouldn't you typically wouldn't set up a discount in the in the cost book, but the discount is typically used if you wanted to on a customer on their work. Okay, this is our typical charge. We'll, we'll give. We're going to have a discount. You do that. That's going to be shown on the. You can show it on the estimate as well, and then it's going to be shown down the line on on, um, on when we want to provide the service. When we if we invoice this directly, it's going to have a discount because that's how we're gonna calculate our profit margin there as well. If you don't wanna have a discount, no problem, you can leave it. But again, typically a discount is done at the estimate level. There is a minimum price per visit. Now I'll talk about this one in, in a second. I'm gonna make another service as well on here. Um, minimum price per visit. There is a total price, again, this which takes into consideration any discounts on there as well. And I can set either of these. But again, for a service that we are you know, going to have to adjust the kit. If you don't want to set this 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 price in the cost, no problem because you're going to it's likely going to be adjusted on the estimate anyway. Now, what we have here at the bottom, because on the details tab, I had said four here, but the maximum of six. Because I have a difference here on the items tab, I now have a. Do you want to charge extra 
for those additional visits? The default is no. It's anything visits, if I bump five or six times, I'm still going to charge them at the exact same rate as the other four. But you can potentially add a, a straight surcharge or you can add it, it's gonna be 2% more or we're gonna charge a specific amount for those goals. So you, could, you can have the additional visits cost more if you'd like to and you don't have to as well, zero dollars is fine. Now, when you're building your service, putting your items in, in here, even if you're not, like I said, you might be adjusting, like it's a good idea on here, like Joe was mentioning, there's an analysis button here in the cost book on the service. This is very useful for getting a quick snapshot of what is the profit looking like on this particular service? Again, and you, again if you use manage it all, you can kind of you'll see this on the estimates as well. Like, what is our cost? So this is our raw cost for this particular service. How much overhead we're recovering, break even, and subtotal. And again, these are just this is based on our division setting. So what we have in our division, when I built my kit, when I had my items, when I put it all together in service, this is what it's saying. Okay, this is my subtotal. So this is my profit, and it gives me a a profit margin as it is right now on there. So price per visit, four visits, you know, we're gonna charge this much. How many hours per visit? Again, based on what is in my kit, what is in my service. So that's our hourly revenue on there. Now, this is also useful. And once I, you, you wanna, again, you wanna check it's kind of good in the cost book, but then also once you get out and do an estimate, you do wanna review this as well, because on the estimates you can see it at a service level, but then also on the estimate as a whole also. So that analysis, that very useful when you're building out your services on there. Now, again, like I was saying earlier, I would also save this. So now that's been saved, I have this service is now available in the cost book. Under the actions button, I have a clone. Like I said earlier at the beginning, if I wanted to have a slightly different variation of this service, maybe a, a commercial versus residential one that I charge more for. I can clone this service, it'll make an exact copy of everything, give it again, a different name, just some other process, we do kits on there as well. I can delete the service on there. Um, again, if the service has, if the service is already in use, um, if I, again, if I've used it on estimates and it's in a job now, I won't let me, the system will not let me delete it, I will then deactivate it so I don't use it anymore. But if you're at the beginning, you can definitely do that. Now, there's refresh pricing here. Now, I'll just touch on it now, but I'll talk about this again in a bit, just because the so refresh pricing and works similar to how we refresh pricing works on the estimates in that it's gonna go back to the cost book and it's gonna check, are the items I have on here, is their cost different than it is right now? Also, it's gonna go check the division settings. Did you, did, have you adjusted the overhead or the profit margin on the division settings as well? So that's a very useful thing to do between, between seasons to make sure that if things have changed, I wanna make sure I wanna get the, the updated pricing um, on here. Now I'll talk more a bit more with respect to kits to some other stuff around that, but very useful in the actions on the, on the services as well. Now, I'm gonna save and close the service. So again, I made to have a service now in there, save and close, that service, is now available to be used on any estimates in the maintenance division. And I'll look at that in a sec. So I'll make another relatively quick service here. I'll just an example on here. I'm gonna click on new service as well. We'll just do a quick mowing. And again, we'll leave it like that. I won't even, I'll just hit save right away, just give it a name and save, then I can adjust the other stuff as well on there, save. Now here again, um, we're going to go over here. Now that I've saved it, okay, it's from contract, recurring, yep, it's going to be weekly. Every one week, uh, 26 maximum would typically go up to 30 times on there as well. So I have that set, great. Oh, I'm going to make sure my category here. No, don't need that category. It's uh, lawn care there as well. Sure, lawn care, save that. Now, I want to go to my items on there as well. So again, my items, add items. In this case, again, I, again, I don't have to have a kit. I don't, I don't have to specifically have a kit for it. If I just want to put in, a, I can put in equipment. I can go <clears throat> searching for equipment on here. Yeah, put this mowing package in here as well. And again, the, again, we're setting up and typically each, we can say like, again, what is our value gonna be in our cost book? Not, not that everyone's getting an hour mowing job, but like I'll say half an hour. Like I said, this is going to be adjusted typically on there as well. I wanna have labor also. 
go in here. O labor down there as well. Now I have the, the labor and equipment. Now, like I said, you, you can, if you want to have a kit set up, you want to like do your mowing by square footage to the property, you can have a kit, no problem with that as well. Or in this case, we just, we're just gonna say this guy's the property gonna take this long and put the time directly in. You can also do it like this as well. Add those items. Now I have two items in my estimate. Again, that there's no kits, which is fine on there. But now in this case, I wanna show you, okay, so now in this case, I want to use the minimum price here as well. So now we're saying, it's saying at, at half an hour, based on bacon, based on my pricing and my cost book um, on there, it wants to charge $25. I wanna say minimum price is 30 on here as well. Put that in. So when you put a minimum price in, and this is even in the cost book, but really it's not that, like it's not that relevant to see how it works. In the cost book, when the, the price of the service is less than the minimum, it's highlighted yellow, and at the top, it tells me total price is less than the minimum. Now, this is just a warning on here. Um, manage really will let you keep it less than that on there if you would like to um, on there as well. It doesn't um, it doesn't mind if it's less than that. Just telling you just so you're aware on there as well. But I'll show you what this looks like on the estimate. If you want to set this up, then again, you'll see the same warning on the estimate as well. So if you know that, well, I know that it's about this much, but typically we want to charge at least this much on there as well. So you can know then again, we do allow you to ignore the warning because you might be the, this customer we've been doing their lot for a long time, we will give, we give them a deal, it's fine. So you just, just so you know um, on there also. Now, have my service, like I said, you, you, can, you can go back, you can put notes, like I said, customer description, very useful. Crew instructions can also be very useful um, as well on there. Now, I'm gonna, this is, I said that was a very quick service to put it in. Now, what I wanna save this, because I want to now put these services, I want to use these on an estimate on there as well, like I said, Save and close, and now I have a couple services. I'm going to now go to an estimate here. Now, again, this at that maintenance estimate. I have maintenance estimate created, and here I'll go to sales, maintenance estimates. I have one. I don't have anything on here yet. I just made a blank shell of, a, of an estimate here. So I want to now, again, go to the services tab. So you can see with this size of the guy, I make the service in the cost book. On the estimate, I go to the services tab to add them. Now, once I've added the service, then at that point, I can then add additional items in there as well. I can, if I want to add more things in this case, I can do it. If I don't have an add items button here, I have an add services button. And you can see also that each of those things that are, were, were on the service, is it included? Is it optional? Is it as needed? Is it on demand? They each have their own section on the estimate. So as you are adding things, they are going to go into the section that was set up in the cost book. And like I said before, you can change that afterwards as well. If you want to move it from as needed to optional or as needed to on demand or included, you, you, it can be adjusted as well. Now, click add services here. Click it, it's going to add, show me again, only the services in this particular division, again, because this estimate, this opportunity is in this division as well. So I'm going to just use the ones that I had done. So bed cleanup with mulching, add that service. Now, so again, see everything comes across just like I had done. If I had put in private notes, they would be visible here. Here are the notes here. This customer description goes here. So they can see what they're going to see on there as well. Hit add service. Like I said, four visits per contract. Everything is everything is as it was in the cost. Add service, you can see it's going to go into the included section here as well. Now I'll put that mowing trim that I just did, this one over here that I had done. Click on that one as well. Again, same thing, weekly, 26 weeks. I'll add it. It's also going into included also. Now I can add a lot another one here just to give you the uh, example um, on there as well. Aeration, overseeding. This one's not recurring. I don't want, I want this one to go into the on demand. Click on that. So you, you, you can change it here and I'll show you another thing once I get down to the estimate as well. Click there, add service. It's going into on demand. And again, when you're ready, you can click add service anytime you can cancel out of here. You can get out there. But the idea with the service is that my services come in, they have a price on there as well. So as you can see again, so here, those two just went into included on there because when the cost, like I said, they were included. The on-demand, the aeration is down and on-demand as well. 
If I want to move aeration, say they want it, they want, they want to pay for it as part of the contract. They don't want to pay for it separately as part of the contract. I can take it, again, the pencil icon, I edit, click on it, and then I can click on in contract and I hit apply changes. And now it's now it's now in the contract as well. If I want to put it back, I can hit the pencil or I can take the little my mouse over the, the grab and take it and drag it down and put it into on demand as well. Now it's in on demand on there. But so with the services, like I said on here, like I was saying, in those different sections here, in the included section here, you can see that I have my bed cleanup with mulching, I have a mowing trip. I can rearrange the services within within the specific areas as well. So again, so they show up very similar to construction. They will show up in that order on the proposal document. 26 visits. And again, you can see like if I want for this customer, we're going to do 26, 25, 24. You can change that to you can change the number of visits as well on there. You can do that. Now also at the so each, each service has its own total price. You'll notice that again, because at the very top warning, because this mowing trim is less than my minimum, it's highlighted here and it's also highlighted here as well. So if I want to see more details about that, if I expand it, then now in the, in the blue, this is now the service that we had on there. So you see, I put half an hour and half an hour is in there as it is, if that's fine. If that's fine, if, that, if that's the correct time for this client, it's fine. But you'll notice that down here, the minimum price, because my minimum price is greater than my current price, I have a little button here that says 30. So this again, depending on how your, your services are configured, you know, if you have fixed price items in your service, you can just change the price of those items. In this case, we don't have fixed price items, so it allows me to adjust the pricing of the service as well. So I want to, if I want to change that, I can click on this button and it will change my price now to $30 on there as well. Cost same, labor amount the same, it's simply gone and adjusted my profit margin on those items as well for that. Now, again, like I said before, if I need to change that time, I can do that as well. Now it's $30 a visit, and you can see that analysis tab is here. So within each service, I can check my analysis for this particular service also on there. Let me just collapse that for a second. At the bottom, I also have an analysis. Now this, this price here, this is for all of the included services. The any as needed or on demand, they're not included in this price because those are going to be billed as are needed on there as well. But the services, again, you can see, put them onto here, they come down to here as well. For that, you can click analysis, you can see, here's my, here's all my services on this particular assignment as a whole across all of them are doing as well on there. Like I said, you can adjust all these things. Again, on this bed pinup and mulching. So this is the one where I had a kit. I'll expand this one. So now I see, here's my kit. Now in this case, they open for this customer, he did, his, his is bigger than 250 square feet. So I can just adjust that right there. Make his, he's got a 350 square feet through there. So again, it'll update then. And you see, and just like in normal kit process, I have some plant toner here, organic fertilizer. I have a zero one. Do I want to use this? So I can, if I want to put some in, then I can adjust this one manually because it's because it's zero on there as well. If I don't have to use it, I don't, I don't put that as well. We have that one available, regular kit. Now again, if they don't want the black dyed mulch, like I said, if we want to edit the kit, I can click on the pencil icon, edit this kit, and under advanced, I can adjust the lead item. If they wanted the red, click on that, apply changes, now it's red dyed mulch as well. Pricing changes would apply potentially again if, or if that's different price than the black dyed as well. And I can see, okay, with 350 square feet, manage says that visit, you know, that service, each one, we're going to go four times, it's going to cost $274. Now, if I want, I, again, I can do, I can change this or I can change the total. And there's also, if I say, let's make it 270 even, or as close to it, I can get that 270. There you go, 270. There's my now, I can check my analysis on that. Still pretty good. You know, so I'm that it's $270 there as well. So again, I want to have round, round numbers as I can. You can do that as well. But again, that's typically after we've gone and, you know, like I said, if it's a kit, we adjust those kits uh, also. So you can see that we set the kits, excuse me, we set the services up in the cost book so that when, when I make my estimates, I have all the things that I need 
to complete that estimate on there as well. I've had these come across, and again, I still have to make adjustments because depending on different time to mow, different time to do the work, because the other thing I wanna talk about is that, that the timing in here as well, we're saying half an hour to mow, this then plays out later when I'm going to schedule this. Okay, how many hours is it gonna take? And then this, this, these values become our estimated values so that when I start tracking this and the job tracking, I can see, okay, for um, Mr. Jones here, we said we're gonna take half an hour or more. Typically, you know, how are we doing on this, on this guy as well? So we can, we'll, we can compare the actual times to these estimated amounts. So ideally, again, as much as possible, you wanna make these estimated ones as accurate as they can be because then you get more information whether we're doing then. So next season, yeah, our timing's pretty good, it's pretty good, or no, we're, we're always going over every week. We need to increase the time and potentially increase the price as well. So with the services also, on, again, make an estimate, be all then on the job and then schedule these services. Once I do the service, then I can run reports on the services. Then I can get reports at the job level and then, or on the service level. Again, I, I can ignore the jobs totally and see how to do on the mowing trim service overall across all our customers or how we do on the Jones mowing trim. So you can get information you can get information at the service level with respect to estimated versus actuals as well. Now, one last thing here. So again, we've made these services, you put them on an estimate, made adjustments. Now, maintaining or kind of an ongoing process with the service as well. So how do we maintain them? But basically, again, it's not unlike the rest of the things in the cost book. Is my pricing going up? Are my materials cost more? Is my labor cost more? Am I making my adjustments to my division, all of that nor normal process you want to do as well. But in the services, so I'll just save and close this estimate here, it's fine. If I go back to the cost book, go into services as well. So like I said earlier, it's gonna go into that bed cleanup with mulching service I made. So if again, if I've made pricing, if I made any pricing changes, and I, again, like I said, overhead, profit margin, labor costs, and those things, I want to make sure that my service now captures those in my cost book, Go to the service, under actions, click refresh pricing. Do that, see it's going to tell me, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go check out the costs, status of the equipment, is there purchasing tax now, any markups? It's going to adjust all of these things when I click refresh pricing on there. Now, um, I do that and refresh the pricing, it'll, it'll update the pricing on this particular service. Now, in this case here, like I said, nothing's really changed on here. If, so there's a special case for, if services have kits in them. So the refresh pricing works fine. It goes to all the items and will update the pricing of all the items in there. Now, if a service has a kit, and again, if I leave the kit alone, like if I, the kit hasn't changed, the pricing's changed, that would, that's, this, is, this is totally fine. If, however, I have gone into the kit and decided, you know what, I need to tweak my kit ratios, or, I want to add something to this kit this year, or I need to take something out of this kit this year. So in cases like that, so if I make adjustments to kits that are in the services, and not, not just pricing, but I'm talking like ratio adjustments, production rates, material ratios on there as well, then for things like that, now say I wanted to change the ratio on this bed cleanup kit here. So I'll leave it in the service, I go back out to my cost book, go to kits, so I have bed cleanup with mulch in my maintenance division here. I have to make sure it's my maintenance division. So when you go into a kit that is used in a service, you will see like there is a services tab now, just to ensure that first. So go to services tab. The services tab shows you this kit is being used in these particular services on there. And you can see that I'm using it in this kit, this service here and I'm using it in this service over here. Now, if you see the little green thumbs up, that means that what's in that service is exactly like what's on this kit. If you don't, then that means that you, you may want to push this update to the kit as well, to the service also. So what I would likely do here, what I would do best is to go in, if I wanted to make adjustments to my production rates, go to my items, or if I wanted to add, you know, we're no longer offering this wood chip mulch on there as well then you know that I want to take it out of the lead items on there. So I, I can I can do this, take it out of there. And I want to change my my production. It's not five hours for 400 square feet. It's actually five and a half. Change that as well. So I want if I want, if I do want to make changes like that, 
When I do that and then I click save, do that. If I go to my services tab now, both of these no longer have the green thumbs up. That means that what is in those services is different than the kit that I've saved now. So like I said, pricing, not a problem. It says if I do change the items or the production rates, I need to go to the kit, do that. And now I can select all of them. Now, so if, say if I want to keep this one, for some reason, this kit, whatever, I want to keep it as it is, I can only check the one and then I can, I can choose which is my lead item if I want to change it, like which is my default lead item, it's fine. Or I can click both of them and then or I can use select all or none. And then I can click the refresh kits button now. I can't click the button now because I've not selected any. I'll click both of them. Click refresh kits. So now it's going to tell me this. We update it based on the current kit ratios and new items added, items we taken out. So the kits and the services are now going to be just like they are in a cost book. So if I had made changes to the service that were particular for that kit, that's going to be overwritten by what is in the cost book. This key here, I can click yes. So now two little green thumbs ups. Both of these services now contain my most current or version of the kit. The, the exact same kit that's in here is the same that is in those services as well. Okay. So like I said, that's kind of a one-off thing. If the services has kits and you wanna do something beyond just, I'm just not changing my pricing, I wanna tweak the kit production rates or something like that or add more options, you need to go to the kit in the services tab and push, once you've made the changes, push those changes to the, serv to the service itself. Okay. All right, so I think that, again, that covers what I want to cover today, the, the creation of kits, using the kits, and kind of maintain kits, creation of services, using the services, and maintain the services on there as well. I know we, we ended up in kits because again, kits can be a very useful part of services on there if you choose to use them on there as well. But the services themselves, very, very useful for maintenance. You set them up, then you can have an estimate that's created pretty quickly. You can also then create an estimate template with specific services on it and then you can get them done fairly quickly as well. So I think that's what I want to show up today. So it's going to throw it back to Joe. He's sure. Thanks a lot, Fabio. That was uh, incredibly enlightening. If anyone has any questions about this uh, particular session on services, uh, getting them set up and using them, or any other of our uh, webinars in this series, or uh, questions about Managed 360 in general, Please get a hold of us. Uh, you can get us at our through our support team, support at dynascape.com, or give us a call. It's toll free, 1 800 7101900, extension 1. That will get you right to our support team. The session has been recorded, and um, we'll work to get that posted as soon as we can. All the previous recordings are here at dynascape.com. Um, hit up our blog and you'll be able to see it right away. Um, this direct link will take you right there. Make sure you join us next week for uh, number 16 in the series, leveraging work orders, uh, whether it's ad hoc work orders uh, for the use of uh, warranty work or storm cleanups. Um, definitely come and check that out. Fabio, thanks for your time and everyone else appreciate you joining us today. Come and join us next week. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.